Morning, good afternoon. Hi, everybody. Hope you're doing great. My name is Scott Morrison. Uh, I'm the creator of this Facebook group. Uh, really glad you're joining us today. So we are doing on a regular rhythm again, Facebook office hours. It's something I a little while back, and we're definitely doing those again now. So that way we can make sure that um, uh, we get all the, the, you know, the different things you need, different support and help and resources you need and be very successful in opening, running, managing, and growing a shaved ice business. Um, that's why we do these office hours. So if you're tuning in now, uh, let me know where you're tuning in from. Um, you may be seeing this on Facebook. Uh, we're also broadcasting YouTube and to Instagram. So I'm going a couple, across a couple different platforms. I may not see everybody's comments live, but I'll do my best to go back and uh, respond to all comments. And uh, if you ask a question or something we don't uh, address in this episode, I'll make sure that we get to it in a future office hour session as well. So welcome and glad you're here. Just by way of introduction, again, my name is Scott Morrison. Um, for four or five years, I, I created from not nothing, uh, opened, ran, managed a shaved ice business, eventually sold that business as well. Uh, when I first got started, it was incredibly painful <laughs> to get started because there was no resources or help that really showed me the A to Z about how to do it. I had a lot of very kind and helpful uh, shaved ice business owners that I would just talk to, ask questions, and they would help me and guide me. And eventually we got things figured out. We had a very good, very successful and profitable business. Um, and then just as kind of as life evolved, we started largely actually for our kids. And as they got older and um, just some things in life changed, we decided to sell that business, which we did last year. But for the last three or so years, I've been doing different consulting. I've worked with a bunch of different business owners, helping them get started and get running. And one of my favorite things to do is do these sessions like this with the office hours, because I think it's a great way for us to interact, for you to get questions answered and get some things um, uh, addressed for you to help you be more successful. So that being said, I have a handful of questions that we'll go through. Now, I don't have this week uh, ability to uh, put on the screen. I was using an app called StreamYard. They changed their, their settings or something like that, so I can't use that one. So I'll tell you what we're going to talk about, tell you some of the questions, um, and then we'll, again, we'll go through and I'll make sure we address that. So one of the questions, the things that was asked right off the bat when I posted that we're going to do this, uh, uh, this session again was this, is how do we get more corporate bookings? Uh, things like company picnics and family days, is there a directory of companies that exist by state? So let me talk about that, really around the idea of getting corporate bookings. Now, by the way, this is one of the most, if not the most profitable way to go about doing this business. What I mean by that is when we had our shop, which was a local shop, it stayed in the same place. It was a food trailer that stayed in a uh, gas station parking lot. We did very well with it being open there, but we made more per hour by going and doing corporate events or doing family parties or doing different things like that. So first off, I highly recommend doing corporate events. Now we would call that catering. Um, I think it's a way that people, uh, that's a term that if you use the word catering, people are going to kind of get what you're talking about. And there's a bunch of different ways to go out and get these types of catering slash corporate events. So let me talk about a few of those. The first and foremost is going to be networking. So you're going to have to be putting yourself out there and talking to people and telling them that you have a business, tell them that you have a shaved ice shave ice, snow cone, snowball, whatever you call it, make sure you let a lot of people know that you have that type of business. You'll get a lot of bookings from people saying, hey, come do our church event, come do our um, youth event, come do my company party, come do our, our wedding reception or something like that. So just putting it out there to, to your networking is going to do be do be a great way for you to get business coming back your direction. Now, one of the best places for that is local chambers of commerce. Uh, sign up and join those is usually you know a few hundred dollar fee for the year or something like that but they'll have local meetings and that's a place for you to go and network with other local business owners talk to them um, maybe some of their companies will want you to come out to do their event but they can help you open the door and get more introductions into even more and more businesses that are out there so that's a great way to do is just networking um, again with friends and family and people you know but other local business owners um, I would also just go door to door and say hello to other local businesses. Even if you're not set up in one spot, maybe you just have a trailer that you take to location to location. Don't be afraid to go into a business and ask them for, you know, is their HR manager there? Is there somebody who puts on company events? Just something like that and make sure that they uh, make sure you talk to somebody in there to see if there's a way you can come and do events with them. Other things that I really like is doing other types of events. So things like sporting events, this could be like if there's, you know, the local 5K, there's a morning 5K or there's a race or something going on. Absolutely like youth sports events like the Little League or if there's soccer or football tournaments or whatever that's outdoor, especially where kids are going to get hot. Go do those types of events. Local farmers markets are incredibly effective as well. And part of doing that is one, yes, you're going to you know make money as you're there at those local events, 
but also have a card or have a sign or have something there saying, we cater, we can come to you. Hand those out to as many people as you can, let people know uh, while they're there with a sign or something. And that is the way you're gonna get people really interested and excited. I can't tell you how many times we'd be at the Little League, for example, um, say, hey, we're doing this, uh, you know, this is what we do, this is our family business, and we get invited to something later on. Uh, in fact, we did that once and we got invited to go do a uh, party slash mixer for wedding event planners. And when we were there, so we went into that event, that turned into a bunch of other business from there. So you see, as you kind of start putting yourself out there, the opportunities for more and more businesses can continue to snowball. <clears throat> the other ways is really around social media. So um, I'll talk about this all the time. You have to have at least, at the minimum, a Facebook presence, a Instagram presence, and you have your business listed on Google My Business. Uh, or, you know, that will show up on maps and so forth. Really, your business listed on Google. At minimum, you need to have that. I do recommend TikTok as well. I know it's a little bit of a different beast, but make sure you have your business and you're actively engaging on those platforms. So I'm going to assume for a second you have an Instagram page and a Facebook page already. Post on there. Post specifically like catering. We do catering. You know, show a party. Show that you were somewhere. Show lots of pictures of video of you catering somebody's event. Um, put their self out there that way and you're gonna get a bunch of responses while well, a lot of people interested, they'll see that. One of my favorite types of live events to do uh, or catering events to do is wedding receptions. For a lot of people, they, um, you know, they'll have the wedding and then there'll be a little bit of a break and then they're gonna have dinner and a reception or something along those lines. And that break in there, often they'll have happy hour. And some people, they don't wanna pay for happy hour, they don't wanna pay for alcohol for their guests or maybe they're not gonna provide alcohol for their guests or whatever it might be. That is a really great spot for you to do shaved ice. Um, and you can come up, be dressed up a little bit nicer, maybe customize the menu a little bit, maybe make it a bit more elegant because it's a wedding. But that is such a cool live event to do that isn't just corporate events. Now, corporate events are great too, but wedding receptions is something for I want you to think about as well. So those are some tips on how to get more corporate bookings slash catering events other events on top of just you having your shop open or going doing festivals and locals, farmers markets and things like that. So hope that helped. Um, next question. How do I get attention in my shop when it's a new shop? So I'm actually meeting here um, in a week or two with another local shop here close by. And this is a lot of what we're really going to talk about is how do you get attention? So you just did all this hard work to get your business up and running, right? You did all the stuff you got to do to create a business. And now you're set up and in your shop or you're in your location. How do you get the word out? And there's two things I would recommend that you do. Um, the first thing is host a friends and family night or afternoon or something like that. Maybe like a four hour block of time from four to 8 p.m. on a Friday or Saturday um, or maybe a Sunday afternoon or something like that. But do it in a time when your friends and family are going to be available and then invite every single person you know to come out to your stand or to your shop or your trailer or your business or whatever you have and invite them to come uh, come out for free. So you're going to give them free product. Now, the reason for that, there's two reasons for that. Number one is this is kind of like a soft launch. This is for you to test your systems, right? How quickly can you make your shaved ice? How quickly can you make your product? How quickly is it working? What workflow do you need to figure out? Because if you if you make something, and you mess it up, and it's your friend or somebody you know, no big deal, right? Just make another one and give them something correct or make, make give them the right thing. So it's a good place for it's a good opportunity for you to kind of test things out. But also, it's a great way for your friends and family to sample your product, enjoy it, because I'm going to assume you have a good product that you're selling, and then they'll be able to tell other people about it as well. So it's a great way to just start getting some momentum going by having local or having friends and family people you know. Now, the next thing you do is you're going to host another event. This will be maybe a week or two or something like that later, and this you're going to advertise much bigger because this is going to be a free shaved ice afternoon evening, something like that. And I know a lot of you are ready. I'll stop for a second. A lot of you are ready because I just said, hand out your product free twice. And I get that there's a cost associated with that. But if you do this right, this is going to be the best way to get the word out there, get a lot of people coming into your shop and enjoying your product over and over again. And you will easily recoup that cost. So don't freak out about giving out for free product. In fact, we can do a whole other session. Maybe we'll do another whole session about handing out free product. I have some uh, strong opinions on that. But in this case, you want to have a party again. So in this case, it's going to be inviting everybody, not just friends and family. You're going to be running ads, running ads on Facebook and Instagram. 
Get into all the local Facebook groups for your community and post and advertise in there. Again, invite friends and family. Go to local businesses, go to daycares, go to preschools, go to the schools, go anywhere you can possibly think out, hand out some different flyers and cards and invite everybody you can. And then make it an event, you know, maybe hand, set up different games that can play like, you know, like the big connect four thing, or maybe like a cornhole toss, or uh, if you want to bring out, you know, ping pong tables or inflatables, have music, have lights, have it be an event, have it be something that people are excited about. Because what you're doing here is you're getting, you're hooking in as many people as you can, because they're excited. There's something new in the neighborhood, right? There's something new in the community. You're like, come in and have a taste, come in and try it, see what it's like. And then they can come back again and again and again. Now, something that is incredibly important to do at the event. Two things, really. Number one, have all over the place links, QR codes better to your social media. Ask every single person who shows up there, hey, can you go real quick while I'm making your shave eyes? Go follow us on Instagram or Facebook right now. Please go do that right now because you want to start building a base of customers that way. And then secondly, have a way for them to register for updates. You want to start building an email list, better that, build a text list as well. So there's, you know, Square and there's other apps you can do. it. We can do sessions of that if you want some more help there. But you want to do what you can to start building a base of customers because after that event, you can start advertising to them or talking to them or sharing with them when you're open. Share pictures about um, your shop, your employees, better your customers as well, show your product. All sorts of things like that, you want to keep you know, building the momentum. But the way you're able to do that is because you invested a little bit and had a day, two days, I'm telling you here, to have friends and family and then the local community out for free shaved ice days. Now, if doing it twice freaks you out, you just want to do it once, that's fine too. You can do that. But I always appreciated doing the soft launch first with just friends and family. In fact, a lot of times we did this in our kitchen. Um, we would practice and we'd have people come over. That's how we developed our menu. Um, we, we come up with some crazy menu ideas. We'd invite over a bunch of people and stand here in our kitchen and we'd make stuff, make product, hand it out to them, get some feedback. And that's really how we developed our menu. But that's a good way for you to kind of get used to like how fast are we going to affect. Funny thing, I remember we had a, uh, an event or we had a, at our friends over at our house. I'm standing there. I have the big shaver. I have a big swan shaver. I'm making shaved ice and I'm handing them out. My wife's like, Babe, we're not going to make any money because you are taking way too long shaving each one and giving it to people. And I learned, okay, she's right. I got to make this a little bit faster. So this is a good way to kind of get the kinks out with friends and family. So those are a couple of things I recommend to get the, the to get to the word out for your new shop. Now, past that, the other big thing, especially when you're open, and you can do this anytime, but especially when you open, invite local social media influencers, the local foodie influencers, invite them out to your shop, give them some free product. Um, they'll do posts and content for you. And that's a good way to get in front of a new audience because they have an audience already. They'll post about your thing. They'll post about your shaved ice that looks beautiful in the flower cup or the bowl or whatever you're doing there. Make sure it looks really good. People are going to be excited because they see that and they'll come out to your shop or they'll follow your social media. So some ways to get the word out there. Okay. <clears throat> Hope this is helpful for you. If it is, um, uh, you can, again, you can leave a comment, but uh, put a like on the video as well. The more you engage with this stuff, then the better that we can do, you know, the bigger this gets, the more we can do, the more uh, resources and support and help we can put into this. So if you're enjoying this, if this is useful for you, whether you're watching it live or later, please uh, go ahead and like it and uh, let me know. All right. Uh, a couple other questions to go through. Next one is where do you find good employees? Now, first thoughts on this. Number one, this was actually asked, um, I get asked this frequently, but this was asked uh, the other day in one of the Facebook, Shaved Ice Facebook groups. First thing I'll say is congratulations on having the courage to even think about having employees. One of my biggest pet peeves about this, in fact, I had one business owner um, that I knew uh, in an area, he and I became friendly with each other. He had shops in really high traffic locations. He had two of them, he had the ability to have two of them but he would never hire employees because in his mind, nobody can do it as good as he, as he could. And there might be some truth to that. Perhaps an employee could not make the product as good as he could or engage with customers as good as he could. I get that, but they can do a good enough job and you can multiply your efforts by having people. So please have the mindset of hiring help. You don't have to do this whole business yourself. So finding help, we had the best luck by far with high school students. So we just started by talking to our, we had kids who were in high school um, at the time then, and I still do now, I have five kids. So I have, I'll have kids in high school for like, it was like 13 straight years or something like that, but that's another story. But anyways, 
um, we would, we started with their friends. And so we hired, our kids were there, they were employees, they'd work in our business. And then we hired some of their friends and that helped. Then we opened up in another location <clears throat> and we just, we just put an ad on our social media to say, Hey, we're looking for help. We put a link to uh, a, um, a Google form where people could go in and fill an application. And just by doing that, we started getting a few high school students who were interested. We'd bring them in we interview them. The ones who, two main things I look for. Number one, did they smile? Did they, were they friendly? Could they keep eye contact? Um, you know, were, were they going to be able to engage with our customers? Well, I'd look for that. And then secondly, you know, how trustworthy do they seem? Um, were they somebody I think could do a good job and can be trusted in a shop by themselves for a while? So we'd look for that. And once we started finding people we liked, then we did the same thing. Like, hey, would you like some of your friends to come work here and do that? And we kept getting more and more people that are interested that way. And honestly, I never had that big of a problem finding employees because we'd, we'd pay a fair wage. We'd pay them an hourly wage, plus they'd get tips and they'd get paid very well. But on top of that, um, they, they enjoyed working there because we tried to make it a good work environment. So then they would in, invite their, you know, tell their friends to come work there too. So we kept getting this pool of high school students that were interested. The other age group that was good too was like early college age. We had a handful of, of uh, kids that had just graduated from high school. They were staying home to do community college or trade or not going to college or doing what they're doing. And they still wanted a good job. This was a good opportunity. So I personally, that was the best luck I always had was, was through high school students networking through their running. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be like a paid ad, but it could just be a post on your social media platform and you'll get some people, send them to a form that can fill an application and you'll start getting some people uh, applying that way. So that's for there. All right, <clears throat> last question I'll go through, um, then we'll wrap up for the day. I like these to be kind of bite-sized chunks. Um, I like, like there's some podcasts I listen to, they're like an hour or two. I saw one of those like three hours long and I'm sure it was great, but I was like, my attention span can't handle that for that long. So, and I don't have that much time. So I try to keep these uh, bite-sized and short with some good actionable content for you, which is why we'll keep this one, should be under 20 minutes or so. So uh, last question is, is, what is everyone using for payment processing and payroll? There are a couple of platforms that are good for that. On the payment processing side, so this is your credit card swipe. I am a huge advocate and huge fan and huge believer in Square. Now, I don't get anything by saying that or recommending them. Um, I used to get free processing. I don't even have that anymore, but I really like Square. A couple of reasons for that. Number one is they have fair rates. You're going to find most business, most uh, payment processors that have pretty much about the same you know, a couple percentage points and a couple pennies they're going to charge you per transaction. So Square, at least for me, was always on par with industry standards. So I felt like it was fair rate. So I was fine with that. But on top of that, their point of sales uh, system, which is where you and your employer are going to go and put in like, you know, somebody ordered, you know, small and these flavors and these toppings or whatever it is. It was very easy to use, but they had a bunch of other very robust tools on top of that. Some were free. Most were free. Some you'd have to pay for. But even the free ones are really, really good. Like it built a customer list for me. So what happened is somebody would come out, they'd buy um, the product. I would, you know, ring it up. We'd ring it up. We'd show them the, the iPad as usual. We has an iPad. They, you know, type in there if they want to leave a tip or a sign for a credit card or whatever they're doing. And then it would ask them, hey, would you like to get this receipt sent to you digitally? You, they could put in their phone number or their email address. And so now you're automatically building a text list or an email list. On top of that, Square, and I don't know exactly how they did it, but they would automatically build your list for you. <clears throat> so marketing being one of the most important parts of having any business, they're automatically building your list and your customers for you. So I really liked it for that. And then they just had a bunch of other things. So they were really good for there. Um, the other thing I liked as well is that you could, you could do payroll through Square. We didn't. Um, I take that back. We did for a while, but I also use an app called Gusto, G-U-S-T-O. And I'll put links into these here in a little bit so you can go uh, look for those. Augusto was really good because it was your AR, uh, AR, HR slash payroll. So human resources. Um, so like when I bring somebody on board, like there's some hiring paperwork that you need to have them fill out. There's some tax forms that they need to do. There's some legal compliance you need to do. You didn't need to know all those. Gusto would walk you through exactly how to set that up to make sure you're legally, you're legally set up and you're compliant. So I really like them for that. And you can run payroll out of there. Square and Gusto would work together, meaning if somebody was logged in and getting tips on Square, you can push that into Gusto and automatically run payroll. So I really like those two platforms. That was a huge help. So that's where I'd recommend if you want to go there. And again, I'll put links in there for you um, so you can check them out. There are others out there. I think this is one of those answers, like especially for payroll, there's no right or wrong answer. Um, there's a bunch of different platforms that work for you. Those are just the two that tend to work the best for me. So 
Um, and we got a question just popped in as well. I'll get to this as well um, before we log off today. For Jalisa, who can you give us advice on who we should use for a business bank account? Um, so with that, I absolutely want you have to have a business bank account. Please do not set this all up and run it through your personal accounts. Um, one of the things I talk about in my programs, I have Shaved Ice Academy and how to start a business for under $2,000. Um, I'll walk you through the legalities you need to have, like an EIN number and setting up a corporation or LLC or whatever you want to do there. But one of the main things that you have to have and you really should have is a business bank account. Don't commingle your funds together, put everything in the business bank account, uh, pay yourself. So for there, I don't have like one, one company I've always recommended. I think um, kind of depends what you're looking to do. Having local branches, I find is important and helpful because you're going to get a lot of people paying with cash. And so having a way to go and regularly make deposits is helpful. So whatever your local uh, bank or credit union, if you want to do that, I'd go there. Uh, but the other thing is make sure that they have an online platform also. So a place to go in um, and, you know, just handle your, your accounts and stuff like that online. Um, do bill pay online or whatever you need to do. So those are the two main things I'd look for. Um, you know, the, yeah, there's just a bunch out there. Probably if I were to start over again, I'd find a local credit union, whatever your local credit union would be. I'd go there. Reason for that is they, um, they tend to have the best rates on things, but also it's a good way to build a relationship because they don't, they're not this massive company, uh, corporation. Yeah, they're, they're still a bank. They're still a good size, but they'll be favorable frequently to a local business owner. You can get to know them a little bit. Oftentimes they'll set up a banker for you um, and they'll have different resources and things that can give you a hand or, or help you out, whatever you have an issue with. So I guess if I were to start over again, that's where I'd go. I would go get, um, I'd go to a local credit union and get started from there. So that's that. All right, guys, a um, bunch of other resources I'll put in uh, comments for you as well. We have a Facebook uh, a group. Um, I just rebranded that. So now it's called the um, uh, Shaved Ice Business Owners Collective. It's how to start and run a successful shaved ice business. So uh, please be in there. Uh, our YouTube channel. I have a bunch of videos from even the last couple of years that still get tons of views about how to get started. What are the essentials? We did a few times roundtable discussions where I got a bunch of shaved ice business owners together. We just talked about, you know, running a business. So that's available for you. Um, and then my current favorite project is uh, Shaved Ice Biz. It's an Instagram account called Shaved Ice Biz, B-I-Z. Um, I post there once or twice a day, a reel. Um, some of it absolutely is educational, but some of them I'm going to try to make a little lighthearted and funny. This business is supposed to be fun. So if you're not following all those, please do that. And then a bunch of other free and paid resources are available at shavedicecademy.com. Um, please check that out also because lots of good help and so, uh, resources for you. So if you have questions, you have more things you want us to cover in future office hours, or even if you need something more urgently, um, leave a comment. Um, you can DM me. I, get, I see all those as well. I want to make sure you guys are doing great, having um, not just having fun. I mean, that's important, but being very profitable in your business. Shaved Ice Business is a great business to own, um, great one to have. There's no reason why I can't be successful, and I've seen it across all sorts of different um, uh, locations and sizes and types. It's a flexible business, so I want you guys all to be successful. So thanks for tuning in for Office Hours today. Appreciate you all, and I'll talk to you again soon.